that's just far too easy, and that's been the issue for the Bombers. Everything the Swans have done tonight has been far too easy. Ben Rutten with problems. They've just got to show a little bit of fight here, this football club. You never, ever want to be walked over in life or disrespected in any way. And I thought Dylan Shear was disrespected in a way you never want to be treated as a footballer. I had no idea it was happening in the moment. I hadn't even seen the vision. That was the first time. Have you addressed that moment as a group? No, mate, no. I hadn't, I hadn't seen that vision at all. I would have ploughed straight through Parker here and got him to the ground and said, you will never, ever treat me like that again. Free. What does he want Dylan to plough through someone, give away a free kick, give away a 50 metre penalty and another goal? I really do care. I love the footy club. Love playing for them. You know, I, I do. I f feel the emotion, mate. And it's, you know, I want to absolutely have full belief, and I do, in the entire club. You know, I want our supporters and fans and members to be really proud of what we put out there on a the weekend. Well, one way to do it, and that's against the Tigers this week. Now, Caro, uh, Xavier Campbell, the CEO, was given an extension during the week, which caused uh, a lot of Essendon fans to go nuts. Yeah, well, I mean, he's, he, he, he's under scrutiny, as he should be. I mean, he's made the coaching appointment that at the moment is not looking all that good. I'm not saying that Ben Rutten should go. I've got no concept yet about Ben Rutten is going to work at Essendon or not, but it's not mm. going well for them at the moment. Um, he's done some great things off the field, Xavier Campbell, but he's gone from being the heir apparent, Gillan McLaughlin saw to himself at one point a few years ago, to sticking at Essendon, and he's got fans and I think Robert Shaw's come out and Chris criticise the reappointment and so Xavier is clearly going to be scrutinised and if Ben Rutten doesn't work out then he's going to be even more scrutinised. What about all the amazing sponsors he's brought to the club in a time when Essendon have been on the nose after the oh, supplement there's scandal? A reason why, there's a reason why he's been seen as a successful CEO. He yeah. did a brilliant job in helping take the club out of the drug scandal and the renegotiation and the legal settlements mm. with all the players. But mm. there is a cultural problem at that footy club and he needs to wear that. Do you reckon uh, well, there's a cultural problem? Uh, well, I think the question you ask is, can you be very good at one thing, and that is the off-field and building your club with sponsors and all that, but not be as good in other aspects of football? They've got footy people on the board, though. Simon yeah. Madden, yeah. Kevin Sheedy. And, and I, I think that... Yeah, um, but well, it happened at Carlton. Well, yeah. Well, it happened at Carlton. And, and Kane was very good at sponsorship mm. and... But at the end of the day, the football piece was sadly lacking. And that's what he's... And, and the football and, club, and Matthew. Yeah, you're a football exactly club. Right. Yeah, so that's his number one KPI, is it? Establishing a football culture and program as a CEO. You've got the commercial side, and that, Brendan Gull oversaw, oversaw Richmond. So how does he distance him? What, I'm curious the timing. Mm. How could you possibly appoint someone who's got that KPI in the middle of what they're going through? He's been there since 2013. It's a very curious... Extension. Interestingly, he's in the news again tonight, Xavier. A story's broken in the Herald Sun suggesting that Nova Paris has quit the Michael Long, the Long, the Long Walk Foundation board because she was disrespected by Xavier Campbell. We haven't heard from Xavier Campbell in fairness on this issue. He's, re he's been contacted for comment by the Herald Sun but hasn't commented mm. as yet. So who knows where that's going to go. But not a, not a great story uh, to come out on the eve of the And you know what to lose your best talented players? Dana Hart, son of a legend. You've got Saad who got, went there and left, who's now settled in the Carlton beautifully. And you've got Fantasia. Some questions have got to be asked. All didn't want to be there. But well, why? That, exactly that's the right. question. Exactly because right. we and all thought changed. it was about the players, but it doesn't look like it was about those three, does it? Lottie, you're close to this, and we'll get to this later on, because Essendon's moved up to Greater Western Sydney over the last mm. week, so we'll get yeah. to that. But you, you get the feel sometimes that uh, the Bombers are still trying to get past the supplement scandal, that they're an apologetic club at times. You know, their, their media people were going after people who were agreeing with you on the weekend on Sunday. Not, and there's nothing wrong with that. They're defending their club. But there just seems to still be that Essendon are trying to do a lot of PR everywhere. And I know you, you think that there's, there's things that, you know, they maybe just need to get back yeah. to, to purpose on this. Yeah, Ed, I want to just look at where they rank uh, as a football team. So let's get yeah. back to football uh, and, and let's take a look at some of the numbers where they rank. And it's 18th for a lot of different areas in, in the game. So their pressure factor and all these areas, tackles. So points against 16th. So the third worth defence, only North and West Coast are worth. Uh, worse contested possession. You want to be a tough side. They're 16th. Their pressure all over the field is 18th. Ground balls, Ross 17th. 
Time in forward half 14th and tackle differential 12th. Can I ask you a quick, yep. leading teams, Ray McLean, he walks to your group, what do you want to be, what are the three words you want to be described as a team? I'd love to hear what Ben Rutten would say to that question. What are the three words that jump out of you on the back of those numbers? Three words, I'd say. Uh, Instinctively, what are Essendon? Well, non-competitive. Uh, in, yeah. L what else? Don't stand for anything. I'd say it's inconsistent. Um, no pressure. Yeah. Like soft. Soft. Yeah. Soft as a one. Yeah. No work rate. Yeah, yeah. That, that's what they should write up. What's the perception? Eighteenth in contested ball pressure. Everything tells you. What are the three words to use to describe Essendon at the minute? So, uh, so can I put to you guys and carry you around? To, uh, maybe a little bit before your time, but I used to go and see the Bombers play a lot in the seventies, and they were a nice side. Yeah, like okay, they're nice. Right? Yeah. Hang on, yeah. And the they, had, they have really good business. He's they, nice, they he's the friendly, baby bombers. he's caring and they're soft. So they had the baby yeah. bombers and everything. And then they brought in the mongrel back pocket plumber from Richmond, Kevin Sheedy. There's a bloke called Alistair Clarkson floating around. I mean, everyone's talking about going up to the Gold Coast. And I mean, Essendon is one of the... I mean, if you're ever going to coach a club... Essendon yeah. is one of the great clubs in football. It's hard because Ben Rutten's a no, second no, look, year coach in a contract. But yeah. let's talk about it. He's been linked to Gold Coast, GWS. Every... How's he not being linked to this powerful Melbourne club? Well, he might be if they keep going this way. Uh, I think the way they're going. I just want to talk about how this has grown and, I've, and mm. it's been taken out of context. I heard Dyson Heppel, I heard Tim Watson this morning say... Matthew Lloyd said, give away a free kick, then give away a 50, then give away a goal. I don't know where, how it's got to that point. Oh, really? All right? I want, I want to show uh, something that happened. So we, we've all seen this, but this is what happened for Melbourne only two weeks ago. So they weren't happy with the way Jones treated Langdon. This is what that is. Firstly, it's Oliver. Then it's Harms, then it's May, and then it's Viney. And they, then Petrarca comes in late and says, you will not treat Langdon like that. The same scoreline next contest, Steve May gets over to Jones and lets him know, and Viney lets him know you're alive. OK, so this is last week, the bomber. So Heppel said it's not about that. It's about playing good, hard footy. That is McGrath, mm -hmm. all right? So we want to compare that to the best. This is the best. So we're going to compare what Essendon is at the moment to the best. So again, 86 to 59. It's all over, but what's the intent? This is that man that runs up and down the wings. Langdon, yeah. yeah. So that's intent for one. This is a spoil. I'm expecting this to go ten rows back at Essendon. Put your knee through him, into that hip, punch that ball ten rows back. He goes for the mark, but he kicks the goal. This is Melbourne. Stephen May, look at the scoreboard again. They are uncompromising in everything that they do. So they can talk all they like, but until you have trust in each other and your teammates and Ross this is one we want to yeah. show we'll get to Reid and Bell of Sydney shortly yeah. but you so want to Melbourne show though, first. disciplined yeah. relentless yes okay Ruthless, we'll have yeah. a look at this coming in it's a one-on-one -on -one top of the square you can just see Ridley and Franklin now watch the the, the Essendon defenders about to fall over you should get to this ball let it run now look at Ridley just cruising Franklin goes over to the ball and then the young fella yeah. comes in, Zach Reed. Reed. I'm asking, what's Reed doing here? I'm expecting a big tackle. He just walks past and his opponent, Bell, kicks the goal. Mm. I, I watch that vision with you. I think the young fella overplayed it. But then have a look at this. Max Gorn, intensity. They're 54 to 7. But this next clip, look at the determination, gritting his teeth <laughs> after a running player. Not to mention the inferred pressure. And there's May, 86 to 37, three-quarter time. So, two comments on um, Retaliate Gate, yes. <laughs> if that's all right. Yeah. I, I agree that a lot's been made out of it that you yeah. didn't ac actually say. I do think it's extraordinary that Dyson Heppel said he hadn't seen it. He must have seen it by the time yes. he went on the couch. Yeah. I just don't believe yeah. that. And second of all, I still don't like what Luke Parker did and I thought it was un -Sydney like and I was interested to hear John Longmire actually talk about it today. We touched on it as part of his game review but that's only uh, part of a general discussion and, and we didn't talk about it for too long at all. So. Um, in the end, you know, Luke's record stands for itself. He's a wonderful servant of our footy club and the game. He plays the game in the right way and, um, and that's the way he'll continue to play. All right, let's have a look uh, about this week. So how do you go about it? Would you go after Dustin Martin? Well, I think you've got to stand for something. He's got to give him a hook. What is it? I think... I saw a headline, Dustin's Bunnies. <laughs> like, that, that, he's, he's record against, there it is there. Dusty's Bunnies. So he loves playing the Blommers. He's averaged 26, four clearances, one goal and a Brownlow vote. 
He's coming back. He's Richmond's talisman. Go after him. Not in a physical sense, but make it. take his time and space. Distract the Richmond team trying to look after Dusty. Give your team a purpose beyond just rolling down the road and we're going to try in a general soon. Give them a specific KPI. What's a quick pass for them, though, Lordy? Because the first bounce, Draper's going to look up and see Nan Curvis. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. you, reckon, you, reckon, you reckon Hardwick's not going to get the Richmond boys going and say, right, OK, here they come, they're going to start flexing their muscles. What we're going to do from the first bounce, we're going to belt them off the MCG in front of a national television audience and give it to them and put them right back in their box. That's what I think he'd be saying. Yeah, and it's not about this yeah. week, Ed. It's, it's about what happens from now on. And I think... Uh, it is the, a big with, game. With the eye tests, I know. But it's not... I think that Dyson Apple's a great guy. He is one of the best guys you're ever going to meet. But... Everyone's sick and tired of the words. Andrew yeah. McGrath spoke four or five weeks ago. Heppel spoke. It's, it's got to the point where people are rolling their eyes. And in fairness to Dyson Heppel, he's coming to the end of his yeah. um, captaincy, you would think. I mean, he won't be there yeah. for that much longer. But it's your senior players that have to lead the way here. He's got to make a stand. Yeah. Uh, what your leaders are, what your coach is, what your captain is, you will be.